Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. We just hit 38,400 subscribers. Let's get to 39k. Please like this video down below and subscribe to the channel before we get started. And today we are doing the long awaited house prediction map. We're going to be using 270 to win.com. We've got all of the key races down here. I'm going to be analyzing each and every single one of these key races down below and we are going to take a good look at every single one of them and make a prediction. A lot of people are saying that Republicans have zero chance at taking back the House. I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to be showing you the final total. And if Republicans don't end up taking back the House, I can show you the few seats that I think could potentially flip into the Republicans' favor that could make that happen if Republicans do end up having a good night come November. So we have some good news out of California, and that is in every one of these four districts, Donald Trump ended up losing these four, by the way. He lost at all four of them. However, Republicans are either, you know, at the same rate or winning in the fundraising. They're winning big in the polling. They did very well in the primary. And if you look at TJ Cox, it seems like David Valadeo is going to be able to win this time around. I believe he will, especially after what we saw recently in the California 25th election, which means that I believe Mike Garcia will be reelected. Judging on how well he did and how he really overperformed expectations with turnout a lot higher than what people would have expected, Young Kim will be back for revenge. She will probably win California's 39th district against Jill Cisneros. And in California's 48th district, I do believe that Harley Ruda is going to lose as well, especially the fact that Trump could actually win that district. He, uh, in 2016, he only lost it by 1.7%. And Florida's 15, it's looking like Ross Spineau will hold on. I do believe Ross Spineau will hold on from all the data that we've seen. Florida's 26 is going to be extremely close. Yes, Trump did lose this district by 16%, but the former popular mayor from the city of Miami, who actually endorsed Hillary Clinton in 2016, is running on the Republican ticket and has the endorsement of Donald Trump. So it's going to be interesting. Definitely, Curbelo only lost by 1.7% there back in 2018. So it very well could flip back into the Republican column. It's something that we're definitely going to have to wait and hold off on. That could be a potential Republican pickup. As for right now, I think we'll leave it in the Democrat column. Georgia's 6th district, if you look at Karen Handel, she barely lost. If, if she had Republican turnout be where it should have been, should have gone Republican. And all the, all the polling we've seen out of Georgia shows it potentially shaping up to be a good year for Donald Trump. He could actually do roughly what he did last time in the state, and he could probably win by around 5. And if that's the case, I would expect him to hold Georgia's 6th. Georgia's 7th is a district that the Republicans are doing better in the fundraising. It's an open seat, but Trump won it by nearly 7%. One could say it's trending blue, but at the same time, I would expect the Republicans to hold on, especially the fact that Woodall won in the midterm election year. So we're going to keep Georgia's 7th in the, in the Republican column. So we have Iowa's 1st district here. Um, this is a district in terms of the polling. We've seen uh, mixed polling, but the Republicans are doing very well in fundraising. Personally, I do believe that they are going to win Iowa's first district. I think that will be a win for the Republican Party. Iowa's second district, however, it went, uh, it went blue big time in 2018. However, uh, the incumbent's not running for re-election. Should be close, but Democrats are doing very well in fundraising. It's probably going to go blue, but it's not blue for sure. Similar thing happening in Iowa's 3rd District. As for Iowa's 4th District, Steve King's going to hold on if he is the nominee, which is not a sure thing, by the way. If he is, he's still going to win in terms of presidential turnout. Um, the comments that he said, a lot of people understood were not that controversial when you look at them fully in context. He's just not the most well-spoken individual with words, but again, it's a rural district in Iowa. They're going to have no choice but to vote for him, for better or worse. So um, Illinois 13 should stay with the Republicans. Illinois 14 uh, could potentially flip, but as of right now, I'm going to leave that in the Democrat column um, for now. Indiana's fifth. There's no real question on that district right there. Shouldn't really be that competitive. Kansas third district, similar thing there. Trump only lost the district by 1.2%, but it doesn't seem to be a district that's even on the Republicans' radar of flipping at the moment. So for right now, it probably is going to stay in the Democrat column. 
So as for Maine's second district, this is uh, Jared Golden voted for one of the articles of impeachment. Trump won the district by 10.3%. Fundraising's looking very good for Brakey in uh, Maine's second district. Polling as well, um, looking good for Trump. I believe Trump is going to win the district by a similar margin to what he won it by last time. Personally, I think Golden is probably going to lose, and we're going to put that in the Republican column. Michigan's 3rd District, Amash, um, the Republicans seem to be doing fairly well in that district, don't really believe it has a chance at flipping. It's one of those districts where Trump may actually improve on his margins um, compared to 2016, so we're going to leave that in the Republican column. Michigan's 8th District, there's really not a big Republican challenger to Slotkin yet. It could be a district that flips. As of right now, I have no choice but to keep it in the Democrat column. Uh, Maine's 1st District, again, that will more than likely than not go to Hagedorn. Trump won the district by 15 percentage points back in 2016. Hagedorn's going to win by a lot more than what he won by last time around, as you will have presidential turnout. Colin Peterson is running against a much stronger candidate this time. He's very, very old. Republicans, I mean, they like him to a degree. He did not vote for impeachment. And at the end of the day, it still seems like he's going to be in big trouble. Trump may win that district by 30 to 35 percentage points, especially after what's happening now in Minnesota. That's just going to be a big boom for Republican turnout. So um, I think that it's going to be a, a flipped into the Republican column. Republicans doing very well with fundraising in Minnesota 7th as well. Um, the two North Carolina districts will flip back into the Democrat column due to redistricting. As for Nebraska's second district, that definitely seems like it will hold. If you look at the primary turnout for Republicans, um, Republicans' turnout was actually better in the district in terms of Don Bacon um, going up against um, the Democrat. Kerry Eastman did not turn out as many voters as Don Bacon. Republicans turned out more than Democrats for that matter. I personally believe that Bacon will win, especially against Eastman, even if Donald Trump does not end up winning Nebraska's second district. So as for New Hampshire's first district, um, Chris Pappas, he's probably going to hold. There's not that many strong Republican candidates, honestly. And honestly, if Trump wins, I would still expect Pappas to hold on. Um, so as for New Jersey, I believe Van Drew is probably going to hold his seat. Trump's polling for him, and he'll probably bring over a few Democrat voters he had last time. That's going to help him cross the finish line, especially in a district that Trump won by nearly 5%. New Jersey's third district, Andy Kim doesn't have a whole lot of uh, prolific challengers at the moment. He's outraising all of them big time. We'll leave that blue for now, but it's not a, a sure thing in the long run. New Jersey's fifth is going to be competitive. It's not on here for some reason in the key races, um, but that could flip as well. Probably not uh, going to predict that now, but it could flip. New Jersey's seventh, Tom Malinowski. He is getting out, outraised in New Jersey's 7th. I believe Republicans are going to be able to knock him off. They'll flip the district back Republican. Um, New Mexico's 2nd district, that's another one I do believe that will flip back Republican. One of those fluke districts, if Trump is going to be winning that district by 10 again, and he may win it by more than that because all the Gary votes going to come home, you very may well see that district flip back. It's to kind of a fluke that Democrats hold all three districts in New Mexico. I'd expect that to flip back. Uh, New York 11's another one. Personally, Meliotakis, who was did very, very well in the mayoral uh, race in Staten Island in that district, got well over 70 to 80 percent. She's not running against de Blasio this time, but she's more than likely going to be the nominee and is probably going to be able to defeat Max Rose, despite you know the fact that she's kind of a rhino. She has a little little uh, never Trump pass to her, but I do believe that Max Rose is going to end up losing that seat. Uh, same thing with New York 22nd. This will be another flip. I think the Republicans will flip this seat back too. Um, believe that they are doing fairly well in the fundraising there. All the polls we've seen out of New York's 22nd district have been looking good for the Republicans. So the data that we have there, besides the fact that Trump won the district by nearly 16%, would show that that district would go into the Republican column. New York's 24th, that probably stays judging by the midterm results. Ohio's first district as well. Oklahoma's fifth, however, was a big fluke. I think Kendra Horn even knows that she is not going to probably win re-election under really any circumstance. So as of right now, we're going to put that district in the in the Republican column. Um, Scott Perry, he will hold Cunningham. He's probably going to lose as well. I really wouldn't expect Cunningham to end up 
to to end up winning all the even the Democrat polls are showing him down by one. That's not necessarily a good look for Cunningham, and he's getting outraised across the board. That's not a good look either. Um, that was kind of a fluke. Texas is seventh. I believe Fletcher will lose to Wesley Hunt. Uh, he did extremely well in the primary. He's leading every single poll that we've seen out of uh, Texas seven. That's subject to change, but right now I would say Hunt's in fairly good shape. Texas 22nd. That probably also stays Republican, judging by things like the fundraising uh, numbers. Texas 24th, similar situation over there. Texas 23rd probably does uh, flip back into the Democrat column, although it's not entirely impossible that Republicans can find a way to hold the district. They've got good candidates. Tony Gonzalez running for that seat. So uh, keep watch on that one as well. Um, and we have a few seats down here. Personally, I think Spanberger is going to lose. I do believe that that will be a seat that the Republicans will be able to flip. I do believe that Nick Freitas is a fairly good candidate. I do believe he will win there. Utah's fourth district. This is one that I disagree with the rating on having it in lean blue. Personally, I do believe that Burgess Owens is going to be a great candidate. Trump is going to win that district by a lot more than seven this time around. As those third-party McMullen voters come home, he'll win that district by well over 10% um, in Utah's fourth. There's not going to be that rhino third-party and he barely won it last time against a never-Trumper. Trump vote energized in Utah's fourth. Republicans are going to be able to flip it. So at the end of the day, here's what we have. 220 for the Dems, 215 for the Republicans. How can Republicans get that magic number? How can Republicans get there? Well, obviously, you look at Florida's 26th district. They could easily flip that seat. Um, if you want to look at uh, some other seats on this list, such as Texas's 23rd district, where it seems like maybe Tony Gonzalez ends up winning there, you have a flip. Maybe either Jerome Bell in Virginia's second or Scott Taylor could flip that, and just like that, Republicans would win the House. So it's easier, honestly, done than said to flip the House, but personally, it's going to be close either way. I have Republicans looking at this, looking at polling data, looking at fundraising data. It seems like Republicans are in good shape to flip about uh, 15 to 20 seats. Democrats are going to flip a few seats, a few seats off of redistricting alone, and they are going to flip a, a few seats off of the fact that you have retiring Republican incumbents, but it goes to show the Democrats really maxed themselves out significantly in the 2018 midterms, and it seems like even if Trump loses, Republicans are going to gain 5 to 10 seats no matter what. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Please like this video down below, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media, join the Discord and subreddit, donate to the Patreon or subscribe star links in description. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Red Eagle, out.